Hi, hello, I am Josie, or Jerobo, and as you already know, I'm here to talk about RoboTea. How do I go through this? So I would like to go through the history of this project, which while it was released in um, 2016, it began a decade ago when I started high school and drew lots of robots and also realized I'm bi and sub subsequently um, accidentally came out to my mom, was told that bi people have to make a choice. They, there's no such thing as bi people. And also entered my first relationship that lasted three days. It ended explosively and it didn't take me until um, graduation in 2010 where I realized I think I messed up because I didn't think about the person on the other end of that bond. And this followed me for the rest of my life, even to today, where I have to take a moment and think about who else is involved in what I do and who, who I'm talking with. So I entered college and still drawing lots of robots, but, but they changed a lot over that journey. Um, sorry. Um, during uh, my first year in 2010, I carried that desire to think about others and bought a lot of self-help books, which I don't know. It, it sometimes feels embarrassing to admit. <laughs> um, but I, I also had the chance to go on actual dates because I was no longer in my parents' um, town. <laughs> and it was through these experiences that I started absorbing, um, I guess, an idea of what I would like to give to the world. And so I went from making games, or making stories about robots who fought tooth and nail for respect and love to softer stories, softer looking robots. Um, and there was, but there was still that, um, narrative that I kept repeating of trying to um, prove myself or gain respect and I had to sort it out. Why was it that I was doing this when I in college was validated by my peers instead of being told that I don't exist or that I can't be who I am and why was it that I was still making games about fighting for love when I was being, I had these chances to be given it. So a couple of years later, I, um, I came up with a thesis idea for my final year of college. And it was based off of some one shot idea of um, a cafe robot, a robot who makes tea for others. And through that experience gains the interest of uh, these patrons. And it was five, or I say five months, but as, as I have mentioned in the beginning, it was from 2006. So I've spent all this time gathering ideas of the bonds that I've had and kind of watered down all the people that I've ever dated into two robots, a blue and a red one. Mm -hmm. And um, I had a few goals for this project, one of which was, um, encouraging the player to take choices or take chances because in um, in my early dating days um, I felt too afraid to actually put myself out there and kind of put on a mask rather than being my genuine self. I also wanted to have all dialogue feel natural rather than something idealized because I don't know I think it's novel to have something feel real and I also um, wanted to make a world where queerness is not questioned, because this is fault, or it followed me from from high school, where I didn't want to have to explain myself or prove myself to my mom or to other people. <laughs> oh, and so that was that was my my big day <laughs> with a tiny demo, and I felt extremely validated when people came up to my booth at my senior show in um, 2014 and was told that people felt, 
I don't know how to put it. <laughs> um, they were interested. I had only given them a snippet of a story of beginning a relationship, but to them, they wanted to see more. They wanted to know more about the characters who were interested in them, and they felt genuine interest in those characters. <coughs> oh, I had also gone, sorry, let me go back one. Um, I also graduated and then promptly got hired by a small game studio, and for seven months did not return to this project. That all changed when I got laid off in 2015. And around this time, um, a lot of my friends also were going through similar low points in their life, either being underemployed or unemployed, and needing a ray of hope. And I, since I'm at my lowest of lows, or at least I thought it was, um, I realized I could turn back to that project that I used to kind of boost myself up and also give it to others, too, to help, help ignite that spark within them, too. So I doodled a whole bunch of stuff in, in between um, job applications and finally found something that I actually wanted to follow through with. And this time, I added one more requirement than those few that I had in college. I wanted this game to also be child-friendly, to be the game that I wish that could have been a role model for me when I had that three-day relationship in high school and explosively broke up with my girlfriend. Mm -hmm. um, so 2015, near the end of it, um, I started putting out a feeler um, to my friends in the Transformers community for people to beta test it. And through this, I also made a whole bunch of new friends who um, dealt with anxiety or had come out of rela or abusive relationships. So they helped me to kind of mold what story I did have to kind of create it into the safe space that they now tell their friends it is. <laughs> and in 2016, I released a game with only one datable route, which was for the purple robot Revic. And I released it on um, Valentine's Day 2016 for $1, a cheap, a cheap date. <laughs> and I had been given a lot of feedback, not just from my friends, but from, or from friends of friends and people who I never would have expected to actually play this. And one, one of which was, I want to know more about the, the teal and white robot. <laughs> I want to have a rope with, with, with her. So I did that. I followed through. <laughs> because. I, I started enjoying getting feedback, whether it was um, people enjoying it or people um, kind of having tips for what I could do the next time around. I also um, was given the chance to, to or people commented that they, they used this game kind of when they were having panic attacks or um, feeling unsafe kind of for this opportunity to be themselves and in an environment where they know nobody will harm them. And so I also got hired um, in April 2016 and was like, I finally have a job again. And it made it very difficult to continue making games. <laughs> but I, I fought against that, or I worked with it, and um, created RoboT One Sip as a free option for those who couldn't um, get the $1 game. And it was kind of like a short, sweeter version of the longer game that I'd made early, or released earlier that year. And I showed that to, at a couple of conventions as well, and actually had the opportunity to see people play it in real time and have gay, mushy feelings, which is, is extremely, extremely embarrassing to, <laughs> to witness. <laughs> but it's also <laughs> really, really cool. And after that, I'd been, I feel like I was filled with, um, a, a lot of encouragement to continue forward with this um, series. So uh, after June 2016, I started working on characters for the next uh, RoboTee. And all went well until um, the 2016 election, where everybody that I knew started panicking. And in that moment, I was like, I don't know what to do, but I really want to help everybody out. So I chose to make RoboT, uh, the, the main RoboT game, free. Because if my games have, had been used for self-soothing in the past, maybe new people can use it to soothe themselves in this really terrible moment. So 
um, I had a, a spike in, in users, and that was kind of amazing because up until then, it, it was a small game, nobody really knew about it. And it was kind of like just passed around my friends instead. Um, but there were more people, and it kind of made me kickstart into working faster on my second game, or my second main game. And that wore me out after a couple of weeks, months. And I, I had to be pulled aside um, by my friends and be told, it's really great that you want to help as many people as you can kind of deal with all this stress that's coming from this new president and kind of new situation we're in. But if you want to actually um, make the next following games in your series, and make it good for, or make the best content possible, you kind of want to take care of yourself too. <laughs> and that's kind of what that moment where I realized I have now gone on the opposite end. At first I only thought about myself when making my projects and kind of in my relationships, and now I'm, <laughs> I'm here thinking only about them. <laughs> so that's kind of where I'm at right now. I'm trying to balance making content for everyone and Trying, trying to do my best to help others, but also have to remember that if, if I want to put something of my best quality or my best self out there, that I have to take time and breathe through it and kind of just not set such harsh reprimands or deadlines on myself. Um, if, if you can come away from, from this talk with knowing that it's okay to take care of yourself so that way you can create another day. That'd be awesome. And thank you so much for your time. I'm Josie Nerona, or Robo Haven on Twitter. Feel free to hit me up. <laughs> thank you.